Some time ago, there was a fascinating website that showed the story of two identical twins. Same DNA, same genetic predisposition to male pattern baldness. But their paths couldn't have been more different. One twin started taking dutasteride at the very first signs of thinning, while the other waited five years until his hair loss had already become severe and undeniable. The result? After a few years, the first twin managed to keep a full head of hair, while the second, despite later starting to tasteride himself, never came close to matching his brother's density. Their story became an accidental experiment in what an early intervention with 5-alpha reductase inhibitors can do. But how exactly did dutasteride make such a difference? And do you really need to start this early to prevent hair loss? Or can you still recover if you have already lost a lot? In this video, we will discuss the importance of using a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, such as finasteride or dutasteride, to treat male pattern baldness. First, I will talk about the drug's effectiveness, meaning what improvements people can expect. Here, I will also show some real before and after pictures that will visually demonstrate what you you can expect by using these treatments. Second, I will discuss how many people experience side effects and what those are exactly. Because despite people commenting about sexual problems, the side effects are not entirely what you think. Third, I will briefly compare the effectiveness of both treatments, sinasteride versus dutasteride, to help you decide which one you might want to use if you plan to treat your hair loss or change the medication. To start talking about hair regrowth and how to treat it, one needs to understand what causes it in the first place. Here we have strong scientific consensus. It is very well accepted in the medical research that the main cause of androgenetic alopecia, which is the genetic hair loss, is a hormone called dihydrotestosterone, or DHT in short. DHT causes hair loss by binding to genetically sensitive hair follicles, shrinking them and shortening the hair growth phase which causes thinner, weaker hairs and eventually stops hair growth altogether. Over time, this leads to the characteristic hair pattern baldness. While some other people also believe that hair loss can be caused by other factors such as stress, seasonal changes or nutrient deficiencies, these are largely myths. They can induce some shedding, but this is mostly temporary and the hair usually grows back again. So next time you hear someone say this, you can tell your friends this is not true and that DHT is the real cause for hair loss in almost all people. But why does the body produce this hormone then? Is it necessary for our body or does it just cause unnecessary problems? This hormone plays a crucial role during puberty, helping develop male reproductive organs and secondary sexual characteristics. After puberty, while still active in the body, excessive DHT in genetically susceptible individuals can contribute to issues such as enlarged prostates and androgenetic alopecia. In fact, this is further corroborated by the fact that the Simbari Anga community in Papua New Guinea, who have naturally low DHT due to 5-alpha reductase type 2 deficiency, almost never suffer from male pattern hair loss. Yet, in the rest of the world, more than 50% of men and women will experience some type of baldness as they age, making this a worldwide problem. More importantly, this can also cause stress and self-esteem issues. Then, the solution to the problem should be simple, right? Block the production of DHT and you should get all of your hair back, right? And yes, in a way, that's correct. If you reduce DHT production with a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, such as finasteride or dutasteride, you can often slow and even stop hair loss, in some cases regrowing hair. Regrown hair might initially be fine and thin, but with continued treatment it will gradually become thicker and stronger over time. Here's a typical example of someone who used only finasteride to regrow his hair, showing his results after 12 months. And then here's another example of someone who used dutasteride to regrow his hair, which is another DHT production inhibitor, similar to finasteride. In his case, results came even sooner, at 7 months of using the treatment. But one might ask, to what extent 
do these treatments really work? Well, the results of these two people just pure luck. That's exactly what this 2006 study researched. In this study, 416 subjects aged 21 to 45 started taking either a placebo in group 1 or the real treatment in group 2. 64 patients were taking the sugar placebo, meaning they were not taking the real medication but thought they might be. This is very important and necessary to later compare the results to people that were taking the real drug. People taking the real drug were in group 2. Here, 71 subjects took 0.05 mg of dutasteride, a very low dose. 72 people took 0.1 mg. 68 took 0.5 mg, which is the normally prescribed dose for hair loss. And 71 took the highest dose, 2.5 mg of dutasteride. Additionally, 70 people were taking 5 mg of finasteride, a high dose considering that the normal prescribed dose is only 1 mg of finasteride. So did the people using real medication see hair regrowth? Definitely yes. The graph shows changes from the beginning of the study. The people in group 1, the placebo group, actually lost an average of 32.3 hairs per square inch. This makes sense because hair loss continued and there was no medication to stop it. What about the people in group 2 taking some medication to stop hair loss? Those taking the lowest dose of dutasteride, 0.05 mg, saw just a slight increase in new hairs, barely enough to stop further hair loss. The 0.1 mg group had much better results with 78.5 new hairs per square inch. The 0.5 mg group, the dose normally prescribed by doctors, saw an increase of 94.6 new hairs. The 2.5 mg group had an astounding increase of 109.6 new hairs. That's quite a lot. I asked AI to create some before and after pictures to show the difference in hair count so you can see it for yourself. The group taking 5 mg of finasteride did also well, with an average of 75.6 new hairs per square inch. Although this was not higher than dutasteride at 0.5 or 2.5 mg, it is still reasonably good. There were no significant differences in total adverse side effects among any of the treatment groups, including placebo. In total, 11 people withdrew because of adverse effects. And why? What were the side effects that they experienced? Well, some experienced decreased libido, fatigue, mood disorders, skin disorders and gastrointestinal complaints. However, it is important to note that people also experience adverse side effects in the placebo group. What does this tell us? It tells us that finasteride and dutasteride are generally very safe to take. You will see on Harold's forums many people concerned about side effects, especially regarding sexual side effects. This is largely due to the nocebo effect. If you expect side effects, you may stress more about them, making them more likely to appear. Therefore, it is very important to stay relaxed. Instead of thinking you might be one of the 11 people who experienced adverse side effects, remember that you are more likely to be one of the 405 people who experienced nothing. In other words, there's a 98% chance of experiencing only hair regrowth and no side effects. As we saw in the graph, dutasteride clearly produces better hair regrowth than finasteride. But this doesn't necessarily mean that you should automatically choose it. There are other factors to consider. For example, except in Japan and South Korea, dutasteride has not been approved for an anti hair loss treatment in the rest of the world. It is currently only used to treat symptoms of enlarged prostates. However, many dermatologists prescribe it off-label. Therefore, it is wise to talk with your doctor and evaluate if it's suitable for you. On the other hand, many people fear side effects and worry that a more effective dutasteride might increase the chances of side effects. Although this is not necessarily true, it is reasonable to start with finasteride and see how you respond. If over time you notice it is working and you want to switch to dutasteride for better results, discuss the pros and cons with your dermatologist. If you wonder why I make these videos, it is because I also suffer from hair loss. In a combination of finasteride, minoxidil and microneedling, I was able to achieve 
these results in a very short time. If you wish to see how I did it, click on this video. I would also love if you would subscribe so I know I should make more videos like this. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I wish you a happy hair journey. Bye.